Hey there, it's Ruben Fleischer. I'm the director of Venom, and you're watching the Venom vlog with Seat, my man. Uh, thank you guys so much for being fans of the character that we all love so much, and I can't wait for you to see the movie. I hope you love it. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to an episode of Spitting Venom, aka The Venom Vlog, and today we are here to talk about the Rotten Tomato scores. We're not going to go over the full reviews of all these reviewers. We only got 27 reviews in now, but this is just October 2nd. It's uh, almost midnight, and I figured, you know, this was just revealed a little while ago. I was at a screening, as you saw the intro that we got from Ruben Fleischer. Um, you know, I was had an opportunity. He came out, he introduced the movie, the movie started, and then I ran, and he, you know, left afterwards and was like, all right, I'm going to let all of them enjoy the movie, hopefully. And then he left and I ran out after him and missed the first five minutes of the movie. But I went out, talked to him, told him about the show. He was there with a Sony contact and she was like, oh, tell us more about the show. And I told them and then he was like, dude, this sounds awesome. Heck yeah, I want to do an intro for your show. And that just, oh man, that made me feel so good actually. So I, I just kept hearing your guys' voice in my head like, dude, you're not going to get another opportunity at this. It's Ruben Fleischer. It's director of the movie. Like, go get him to do an intro. Uh, it'll be awesome. It'll be worth it. And what's the worst that can happen? They tell you, no, security escort you out and then you're going to pay to see the movie Thursday anyway so you don't really have anything to lose so uh you know for you guys definitely uh and for the show in general I was like I gotta get the director of the movie to do this because you guys always ask me like well you got these four great actors that are in the movie you got them but how you know where else can you go like who else can you get and I figured you know what this is my chance to go almost all the way to the top so let's just go there and uh and you know get Ruben Fleischer since we had the opportunity so Big thanks. Ruben, thank you so much for doing that intro, and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And I will play that periodically on the show, along with the other amazing actors that also did intros for this show. Um, but today, what we're going to talk about is not my review. We're, we're going to, in the next episode, get into the actual event that I went to, and you'll see footage there and everything from that event. Uh, but uh, that'll be in the next episode. So we're not going to talk too much about my opinion. If you want to know, you know what I thought of the movie overall, um, I, I would say I enjoyed it. I have some criticisms, but we'll talk about that in my um, initial reaction video too, where I'll talk a little bit, maybe like five minutes, a uh, little short review for you guys, like a, a, just a, something brief. Uh, five minutes is brief for me. You know me, I can talk forever. Um, so uh, this 30% though uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, when I got home, I was like, all right, I'm going to look this up and see where it's at. I was hoping it was maybe near 50%. I'd see it at 30% is kind of a bummer. Obviously, we're going to get a lot more reviews in, another 100 or so at least. Um, but I feel like this is, <laughs> I think this is pretty much where the score is probably going to be. If it goes up, it probably won't go up much. If it goes down, it probably go down a lot. Um, and it's a, it's, it's a bummer. I feel like it's a little unfair. Uh, but again, we'll talk about that in my review. For today, we're just going to talk about the initial kind of the tweet version of these reviews. So we're gonna, you know, quote these people. Uh, their full reviews, I'm gonna put a link down below to Rotten Tomatoes, you can click that uh, that link, you'll, it'll take you here and you'll see all these reviews and new ones that pop up every day. I think Grace Randolph is seeing it tonight and there's a couple other people uh, that are watching it at different screenings and then there'll be another screening tomorrow night with other people. So these, you know, they'll keep coming in over the next few days. So, uh, you know, this is just, we're just gonna do one video on it though, unless it significantly goes up. Uh, we probably won't do another video on the Rotten Tomatoes score. Although we'll keep an eye on it and we'll mention it, you know, here or there in future videos. And I'm sorry I couldn't do a stream tonight, but it's almost midnight. I'm so tired and I got to work at 8 in the morning. So, um, you know, I'm going to be up working on these videos already. So I'll get a stream up to you guys very soon. Probably Friday because I'm off on Friday. Um, all right, so here we got It's a Mess. But wow, is it ever fun? Is it a, is it an ever fun, fascinating mess? That's from Katie Walsh from Tribune News Service. And I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice. I'm, I'm like really tired. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's a mess. But wow, is it ever a fun, fascinating mess? I'll agree with her on some level. There's some messy things in the movie, uh, but I wouldn't describe the movie overall as a mess. I would disagree with her on that level. But you know, this is her review. She gave it a two and a half out of four um, on the Rotten Tomato meter. So she's kind of certified fresh, barely. Um, then we also have uh, Justin Chang here from LA Times. And he says, Venom feels like pretty weak poison. <laughs> and we're going to see a lot of this. We're going to see a lot of people just being cutesy with their stuff. I clicked on his full review. He goes into some detail about stuff. So, you know, that's why it's always better to not just base off these one these little quotes. It's always best to go and read their full review. So I do encourage that. Um, but uh, I would say, like, certainly don't get mad at these people's opinions. It's not worth it. This is That's their job. They have an opinion. And uh, some of it I feel like is misdirected. Sometimes I feel like, uh, you know, 
mood affects everything. Sometimes I'm not in the mood to go see a movie and I go see one anyway. Sometimes when it feels like work, like you have to kind of push, you can't bring your life with you to work. And I feel like a lot of reviewers do now. I feel like a lot of them just, they, they make it so personal and, uh, and I don't get it. I don't understand why. Um, it's just a movie and you know, if you don't have fun watching it, that's fine. Say why you didn't have fun and say why structurally it doesn't work or the acting doesn't work. But, uh, sometimes they just go in these weird hy hyperbolic goofy comments and I, I I can't understand it. I don't know why. Um, Todd McCarthy says a significant problem in a film full of them is that Eddie comes off as a dope, an eager doofus, hardly convincing as a boundary pushing journo or someone who can outthink a titan of technology. Um, again, I'm not going to spoil the movie. We're not going to talk about my review, but I would on some level disagree with this. I would say Eddie does not outthink a titan of technology, nor is he meant to look like he could. Um, I think that's kind of the point of that character in the movie. But apparently Todd saw something different and was thinking Eddie was like, you know, this knight in shining armor. And that's really not who Eddie Brock is. And they do a very good job, I think, of characterizing, uh, characterizing that character in the film of like where his morality sits and the lessons he learns by having bad morals, I would say. Um, Chris Nashawadi, and hopefully I'm not mispronouncing any names as we go through these, he says, it never rises above bombastic and busy, which is something I never thought I'd say about a movie starring three aces like Hardy, Ahmed, and Williams. Uh, he gave it a C plus. Um, so yeah, also rotten. So we have one fresh and three rottens so far, which is, uh, it's, a, it's a bummer, but hey, we gotta, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta roll with the punches here, guys. Michael Nordine from IndieWire, he says this radically different approach will surely be jarring at some, or to some, but the fact that this movie could never exist in the same world as Captain America Civil War, despite hailing from the same brand of comics, is part of its charm. And he gave it a B. Um, even though he gave it a, a good rating, I don't even know if I would... <laughs> it's like, it's like I don't know if I would fully... Um, I, I, see his, I don't know if I see his point on that one or his point of view on that one. Um, I mean, I get what he's saying, obviously. I, I'm not saying that, but it's just um, it's an interesting thing to focus on for your little tomato meter, I guess. Uh, but that was his summary of the movie, uh, a summarize, summarization of his full review of the movie, I should say. Um, but he gave it a positive, so that's good for people who are looking for positives, I guess. Um, Alonzo Duraldi says, if you placed Tom Hardy, replaced Tom Hardy for Steve Martin and all of me, and switched out Lily Tomlin for a wad of chewed up black licorice, you'd have venom. <laughs> it's it's one funny thing I see a lot is that people, I, I've seen other reviewers mention all of me. I think we're going to read a couple, one or two of them more here. Um, it's it's really funny that pe people think of these movies like Liar Liar and All of Me, and that Liar Liar one even seems even more strange to me now. Like I, I don't, I didn't see that in Tom's performance, but again, you know, someone did. So who am I to say that they're wrong? That's their opinion. Um, but I, I don't know if uh, saying this is like all of me is is either, even that accurate. But whatever. It's been a while since I've seen that movie, so maybe i got to rewatch it. I love Steve Martin, though. Um, all right. Mike Ryan, Up Rocks. I think we read comments from him before. He said, Venom is not a good movie, but I also want to make it clear that I had the time of my life watching it, uh, even though he gave it a 4 out of 10. So apparently the time of his life is only worth 4 out of 10. Um, that's an interesting review. So you had the time of your life watching it in a bad way. I think he was the Rocky Horror Picture guy, um, but he still gave it a 4 out of 10. Interesting. Uh, you could almost convince me, says Matt Singer, uh, that the messy tone was part of some genius master plan to make a movie that matched its title's character's disjointed temperament. Almost. Uh, he's from Screen Crush, so he's basically pointing out that, uh, you know, the way Tom Hardy acts as Eddie in the movie, how he's kind of like, I didn't see it as disjointed. I felt like it was very consistent if you are really looking at what he's doing in the movie. And I'm not saying this guy missed anything um, or Matt Singer missed anything. He just interpreted things a little differently. But I thought Eddie was pretty consistent in the first half of the movie and then is put in an impossible situation to where it makes sense that he doesn't know what to do from scene to scene at times. And then when he finally you know, gets hold of something and, and kind of understands it and then learns from his mistakes, there's like a character growth there. There's like a character moment. It's not... Could have been handled a little bit better. I'll definitely say that, but it's there. It's it's definitely there. So I I wouldn't call it a ma genius master plan. I would say it's you know the best that they could do with script writing one on one. But uh, I never I thought the tone was I don't know there was humor in it at odd times, but that's in keeping with Venom. I thought I thought it worked. I mean for me it worked. Uh, but uh, again we'll talk about that in my video. Um, see Stuart McGurk. 
uh, from GQ Magazine, UK edition, says when a major fight scene resembles a pair of black pants caught in a white wash, it's fair to say you haven't taken the audience with you. I will almost agree with that, and we'll talk about that in my video too, but uh, just know that I, there, is a, there is kind of a little bit I would agree with there. That's part of my criticism of, of a fight scene in the movie. Um, Tim Grierson from uh, Screen International says, like his hungry alien latching onto Venom, or Eddie, uh, like his hungry alien latching onto Eddie, Fleischer cunningly fastens a malicious irreverence onto an otherwise lackluster superhero movie, but the symbiosis doesn't quite take. So basically saying like all the pieces were there and Fleischer did a good job, you know, putting the pieces there, but it didn't click for him. The symbiosis didn't match up, I guess, uh, which is kind of a movie reference. Um, yeah, that's, uh, I don't know if I would agree to that point, but you know, again, that's, that's uh, Tim's opinion, obviously. Uh, James Motram from South China Morning Post uh, says, well, I thought China would have gotten a little bit better review because I know they had like a lot invested in this movie, but hey, you can't buy journalists, right? Um, at least that's what they say. Uh, we know that's not true though. Uh, Venom is a film as messy as the amorphous black blob at its core. Uh, two out of five. So yeah, you can see messy is the tone, uh, the word that gets thrown around in a couple of these. And I don't know, I feel like there are some things that could be made more clear and you could have added a few things to it to like expand a few things, make a few things more obvious um, to the audience. But I would, would, I don't know, I wouldn't use the word messy to describe it. Maybe some of you guys would. So if so, let me know down below after you see the movie. And do be careful of spoilers in the chat below too, uh, because I'm sure some people will come in and start talking about stuff. So be wary if you haven't seen the movie. Um, and then the last one here, we have uh, Robbie Collins. As Sony Pictures appears to have lavished a nine-figure sum on and are now hoping to establish an entire cinematic universe on the back of a character who likes to who looks like someone drizzled with cream egg filling onto a bin bag. Okay, well, that's awesome. Robbie Collin from the Daily Telegraph, UK edition. Uh, very wordy um, and uh, and mostly, <laughs> I, get, I mean, he's painting a picture there, that's for sure. He gave it a one out of five. Um, so yeah, so, you know, I'm not going to read all of them. Those are just the ones that are on the front page right now, but you guys will probably see more as you go to it. It'll update constantly and we'll get more and more reviews. Uh, but it is sitting at 30% as the moment I am looking at this. And I'm going to refresh the page just one more time just to see if it drops or increases at all. And it has dropped. <laughs> it is now 28% with uh, two more rotten reviews that just came in uh, from this for this movie. Uh, that is a bummer. So that is, that's it, you know, it's like, we gotta, we gotta just accept it. We, we all kind of thought this would happen and it shouldn't ultimately deter you. I mean, if you really are like, hey, I, if this many people think it's bad, it must be bad. If you have that mentality, that's fine. I'm not here to be a commercial for anyone, obviously. Uh, I, when I started this show, I wasn't sure about this movie. I kind of got swept up in it as we, you know, examined it. There were things I was critical on, like Tom Hardy dancing, you know, that scene where we go back and watch like our early, early episodes, you'll see me talk about that. And I was very critical of that and I didn't like it. That actually got cut from the movie. That's not in the movie. Um, so, you know, I, I, I was, I kind of got one over. And so I went in with like this knowing that people said this was as bad as Catwoman or bad as Ghost Rider or something like that. And I, I disagree. And again, we'll talk about that in my initial reaction video. But uh, but for this, I mean, like, these people are, they're pretty much hated this movie. I mean, there's no arguing that. They hated it for whatever reason. Uh, but I hope that doesn't deter some of you for still giving it a chance. I would say it is worth watching uh, for sure. And I'll explain a little bit why without getting into spoilers in my video. But we're going to have to wait two episodes for that because my next video is going to be a lot of fun. And you're going to hear other people's review of the movie. At least two or three people who uh, saw the movie with me. And I try to get, you know, testimonials when they were coming out of the theater. I try to get a couple of them. And some of them work. And I might have to cut a few of them because, you know, I, I had to, like, you know, talk to get them to talk some people get nervous in front of cameras but i made them sure that you know i made them know like hey this is going to be on this show this is my show showed them the page and stuff so it's like i was very upfront with people what i was going to use it for and uh and I, we even had a kid who was sitting in the theater uh sitting right next to me and he had the time of his life and uh, that was crazy to me that was really crazy so we'll talk a little bit more about that in my um episode where we would discuss that but we'll go over some of this in the next episode and it, the next one will probably be good like 15 20 minutes long and it's going to be everything i filmed at this event well almost everything because i'm going to save one surprise for you guys for my initial reaction review so make sure you tune into that one for that surprise 
But let me know what you think of this, of the Rotten Tomato score, 28% now. Ah, that's heartbreaking. But I would say still go see the movie, and I'll explain why in a couple episodes from now. So that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.